Okay, here it goes again, part X of Y, in a long conversation we've been having this year about Columbus Blue Jackets star-scoring winger Patrick Laine. We've made videos throughout the entire season discussing the future of Laine, whether or not the Blue Jackets want to trade this guy, whether or not he will resign, whether or not that qualifying offer will get fulfilled, where exactly things are going to go with Patrick Laine has been a very hot topic, and the previous few weeks worth of activity with the Blue Jackets and their coaches quotes and the game results and all that, it's kind of made things a little bit more interesting on the line A front, which is why we're making this video over here. It's a part, as I said, part X of Y, pretty much, because we keep on making videos about this guy. But when it comes to Patrick Laine, I'm pretty sure most people are indeed familiar with the story and the status that has surrounded this Finnish scoring winger the past few years. He was the second overall pick back in 2016. He was an absolute monster when he made his debut in the league, was a pretty much instantaneous 40-goal guy who was able to get that mark in 2017-2018. However, after a few years of being sort of on the decline, his 2018-19 was seen as somewhat of a, let's say, negative year for him, even though he had 30 goals and 50 points. Laine, ever since getting traded over to Columbus, has had a pretty strange tenure. He started out his Columbus Blue Jackets season in 2020-2021 in a pretty poor manner, to be honest. Like, a lot of people would go out there and say that his first season in Columbus was not a good one. 21 points, 45 games played, sure he had some good goals, he had that one end-to-end -end rush that made all the highlight reels everywhere, but holistically, it did not really feel like the Blue Jackets got the line they were expecting to get when they traded away Pierre-Luc Dubois for him in that significant trade a year ago. This season, though, Patrick Laine started out his 2021-2022 campaign with a pretty good marker of 10 points in 9 games. He was looking really engaged, he was looking really good, and he was actually going out there scoring points on a pretty consistent basis. Unfortunately, after the game against Colorado November 3rd, he was sidelined for over a month with an injury, and then he made his return at the end of 2021. Since then, Patrick Laine, in the stint he has had, had, if you do the math right here, he has a total of 17 points in 22 games right now. He has 7 points in his previous 13 games, so that's the return that he has had, and he actually has had a pretty good showcase in his most recent showing. It was a 2-assist night against the New York Rangers, that was the 5-3 win earlier this week. However, we're going over onto Aaron Portsland's Twitter account because back on January 24th, so before the New York game where Laine had two assists, in fact it was two games ago, before the Columbus Blue Jackets 6-0 loss at the hands of the Calgary Flames, and after their 2-1 loss at the hands of the Senators, this is what Portsland says when it comes to Brad Larson and what he has to say about Patrick Laine. This is from the 24th, as I said. Patrick Laine was an engaged, impactful player over the first few weeks of the season. But since his return on December 30th, his performance has started to slide. I asked Coach Brad Larson, has Laine fallen back into last season's form? This is what Larson said. Yeah, I think he's fallen off here. There's no question. I'm trying to let him work through it. We've had some good talks, and I'll just leave it at that. We're going to work our way through this, and I mean, we're going to work through it the right way. We're not going to go down the same path as last year. We've had deep discussions about where it got to, and I don't think he wants to get there again. It's my job now to help him through that. If it gets uncomfortable, if it gets hard, that's okay. But I want to help him grow as a player, and we need him. So we will put the work in, and he's going to get back to where we need him to get to. Now, I'll say this right here about Brad Larson. I love the positivity here. I love the motivating, you know? That's what you gotta do if you're a coach, especially a coach of one of the better younger players in the entire NHL. These guys are so fragile when it comes to one bad coach could really just mess up the rest of their development long term. And so for Brad Larson to be that precise in his wording and what he chooses to do and how to approach the situation, it's a good thing. But we cannot go out there and ignore the first part of this statement. Yeah, he has indeed fallen off. It's not just Aaron Portsland going out there saying, yeah, Patrick Lyonet was a different player at the beginning of the year than he was now. It's the coach saying, yeah, I think you're right. Now, for coaches to go out there and actually acknowledge that about their players, I think firstly, being honest is a good thing, right? But at the same time, things like these are almost never said. So when it is said, I think it is sort of important to acknowledge the direction that these players are going down. And 
I mean, I guess it's been paying off pretty well, because this Brad Larson quote saying that Line has indeed fallen off was back on the 24th. Ever since the 24th, Line went out there with two points in two games played, with the most recent game being that two-assist game. Before this quote was said, though, Patrick Line and his point production was down there at, what is that, one, two, three, four, five points in something like eight games, which honestly is not terrible, but like, you know, it's Patrick Laine. You have to go out there and expect that this guy's going to be able to produce at half a goal a game, a goal every two or three games pretty much, and see him go out there producing points because Patrick Laine, I mean, the time is sort of ticking down on this guy. He is 23 and he does have one more year left on this contract that he's playing right now. It expires at the end of this season. So, the decisions that the Columbus Blue Jackets are going to have to make when it comes to Patrick Laine, sure, on paper, you might take a look at his game log and say, okay, six points in ten games, that's not bad. Four points in five games, that's not bad. But just in terms of what you are expecting to get out of this guy and the dichotomy between what we saw at the beginning of the season and what we saw when he returned from injury, the coach called him out, man. He said he's fallen off. So... It makes the conversation as to what to do with Line all the more difficult, and I very much do not envy that of Jarmo Kekalainen and his job heading into this offseason, trying to find either another trade partner, because we all know the Patrick Line trade rumors that plagued the NHL like two years ago. Those were huge, and it was kind of transcending every NHL team fan base's conversation and discourse because everybody was thinking, okay, Line, he's a 40 goal guy at his best, right? But He's down there in the dumps. His value is at an all-time low. He's not going out there and producing in the way that Winnipeg Jets fans want him to. Sure, he had a really good game to kick off his 2020 campaign or 2019-20. Yeah, something like that. But pretty much, Patrick Laine is kind of in the dumps when it comes to his trade value. So maybe we should go out there, try to entertain an offer and all that. Those were the conversations that other fan bases were having about Patrick Laine a ton. Just a year and a bit ago, and so now, you think about where the Blue Jackets are, are we going to have to start having those talks again? Is it time to start thinking about the idea of a Line a trade again? Even though he had himself a pretty good stint earlier on, this season he's only got 6 goals in 22 games, do the math on that, 6 divided by 22 multiplied out by 82, he's on pace for 20 goals, which would be a career low if you don't count last year's shortened season in 46 games played 12 goals as a season. He's been a consistent 30-plus guy the previous few years, and so now you really ask yourselves, what is the direction that Line is taking his game? And is Brad Larson and his guidance enough to go out there and fix that? Enough to allow this guy to prosper and start potting in one-timers left, right, and center once again? Because we know he's capable of that, it's just he's fallen off. So, we have ourselves pretty much the rest of the season for Brad Larson to go out there and fulfill what it is he is saying here. We're not going to go down the same path as last year. We've had deep discussions about where it got to. I don't think he wants to be there again. I'm going to help him out. We'll put in the work. He's going to go back to where he needs to go. Again, I love the positivity and I love the way that Larson is talking about this. It's just, is he actually going to be able to do it? That's my question. We're halfway through the year, we've got 40-something games left, Patrick Laine missed out on an extended chunk of the season, but now, who knows if a two-assist game against the New York Rangers the other day on, when was that, Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. Who knows if that's the catalyst? If that game was the first of many games where Patrick Laine is going to go out there and start scoring points and actually start getting production on the board again, he needs to get some goals, dude. Patrick Laine, going back to the start of the year, he's only got one goal in however many games played he has had. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, yeah. Is it a traditional Patrick Laine that we're seeing right now? I would honestly say no, but... I guess Brad Larson's going to help him out and to see if he can actually go back to that same 30, maybe 35 goal form. So we'll see. Talk to me in the comments. What do you think about this entire conversation over here? Patrick Laine falling off and whether or not the Columbus Blue Jackets should go out there, try to extend this guy, try to trade this guy. There are a myriad of options that exist in this situation, but you can tell me in the comments what you think should be the most appropriate. Is it a wait and see kind of thing too? Do you really want to go out there and see, okay, is Brad Larson going to be able to fulfill his word and actually do what it is that he's setting out to do? Or 
Do you look at the body of work that Line has already had, maybe put the cart before the horse and say, okay, well, we can still do this before the trade deadline. Let's see if we can actually get something here. Let me know in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rosh Hashanah and I. And bye.